Nothing is official until Stephen A. Smith renders his judgment on an NBA uh, contest. And before we get deep into the heat going on forward, this is personal for you, is it not? Heat, Lakers, what's the background on that? Well, it's a devastating blow. I mean, for my <laughs> entire career covering the NBA, which spans nearly a quarter century, I have been clamoring for Miami and L.A. to be in the finals for obvious reasons that have absolutely nothing to do with basketball. Nevertheless, that is not what happened because even though they're in the NBA finals, the bottom line is everybody's in a bubble in central Florida as opposed to South Beach or La La. Hooray for the two teams. Okay, but we got to celebrate. But it doesn't do much for me. Pretty good run by this. Well, you go ahead and do that. <laughs> we need you to, to join in a bit. Uh, as we mentioned earlier in the show, this team was 75 to 1 to win the whole yeah. thing. You wanted it for different reasons, but when did you start to believe in the Miami Heat? They just seem to get better and better and better. Well, watching them go up against the Greek freak and the Milwaukee Bucks and the way they ran them out of the gym, uh, the reality of the situation is that they clearly look like the better team, and we recognize that when they're hitting perimeter shots, they can beat anybody. We know about the leadership of Jimmy Butler, how he's a dog, make no mistake about it. We see the agility of the athleticism of a Bam Adebayo, but when you look at Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson, certainly I'm not comparing them to Klay Thompson and Steph Curry. But in terms of these guys and their ability to shoot the basketball and to really go get it, when you see a guard tandem, the way that they're capable of playing together and what they're capable of doing from the perimeter, if they give you the kind of production that Tyler Hero gave you in game four when he dropped 37, a guy like Duncan Robinson tonight, you know, drops five three-pointers, hits five of seven shots from the fifth, five of seven shots from three-point range. Uh, when they're doing those kind of things, you can't count them out against anybody, particularly in today's NBA. So they put everybody on notice when they were ramrod and the Milwaukee Bucks, who were the number one seed, that they were here and they were coming. And you sort of knew. I picked them to beat Boston in seven games, not six. But it's because of their moxie, their athleticism, the dog inside of their chest, the way they go after it, and the fact that the matter is dead deep and they play together. And that's why they're going to the NBA Finals. Now they're about to run into King James. We'll see what happens. Uh, Coach Bolster runs the show, but as John pointed out in his interview with Bam, there's something about this team where it's like the DNA of Pat Riley, right? It kind of goes down from him, his ethic, and everything he did in his coaching. Well, you got to put in the work. That's number one. Number two, you can't have any kind of fear or fright inside of you. Uh, if you've got that kind of mentality, you can't play for Pat Riley and Eric Spolster. They're simply not going to tolerate it. There's a standard that they've that they've set from the days of Alonzo Mourning with Tim Hardaway, right on up to D Wade with Shaq and Alonzo, right on up to D Wade, LeBron, and Chris Bosh. You've got to have ability, but you also have to have heart. You can't have any fear. For anybody and if you recall there was some reticence on the part of LeBron James when he had first arrived in Miami because he was a bit reluctant to take the proverbial bull by the horn until they lost in the finals to Dallas and D Wade says this has to be your team and then LeBron James came back on a mission and just showed the world that he was the best in the world and ever since then he's never been the same he's going to be on the Mount Rushmore of basketball when all is said and done as far as I'm concerned he's already there but when you look at the Miami Heat in terms of their culture they're about championships and they're about doing it the old-fashioned way nobody's going to outwork us nobody's going to scare us nobody is going to sit up there and punk us we are coming we're ready for war at any particular moment in time and if you're not that kind of guy made from that cloth you simply can't play in South Beach for Pat Riley that's the guy that's the kind of mentality that he has which is why it was easy for Dwayne Wade to sit up there and tell a guy like Pat Riley excuse me this dude Jimmy Butler that's with the Philadelphia 76ers right now now not only do you take him away from Philadelphia, from Joel Embiid and a Ben Simmons, but you bring him here in South Beach with these brothers that you got on this squad, you could very well be in the NBA Finals, and that's exactly where they are right now. Everything you just said suggests that those laying the line on this next series are dead wrong. They're three plus to one underdogs to take on the Lakers. I think you like their chances better than that. Well, I like their chances, but I'm not saying it's better than that. Let's not let's not get a little, bit, a little bit beside ourselves here. They got to go up against LeBron James and Anthony Davis. I love Bam out of bio. He, he was critical of himself after the game five loss, came out here and played lights out tonight with 32 and 14, a career high of 32. We saw what Jimmy Butler did in terms of chipping in this 22. We saw Tyler, Tyler Hero come out and hit a three and ultimately score 19 points. We saw Duncan Robinson be the specialist that he is. But you're going up against a Los Angeles Lakers 
squad that does have an elite defense with serviceable parts capable of hitting three-point shots. You've got a guy in Rondo, Rajon Rondo, who's also a champion and has been playing stellar basketball as far as I'm concerned. And then you add to that the best duo in basketball in LeBron James and Anthony Davis. They're supposed to be the favorites. Miami is not supposed to beat them. And as far as I'm concerned, the great, great chance that Miami has is that all the odds are stacked against them, and appropriately so. Because there's no way in hell that they're supposed to beat LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis and the King James, they're supposed to show up and close this deal. That's why they're the favorites. That's why that's that expectation. And that's why if they don't get it done, we're going to be looking at them with a proverbial eye raising of our eyebrow and saying, what the hell happened to y'all? It's really that simple. The <laughs> Lakers deserve to be the favorites. Miami can't be summarily dismissed. But let's not expect Miami to win the series. Let's expect them to make it a series, sort of six games, even possibly seven. But when all is said and done, it's supposed to be King James being crowned for the fourth time in his illustrious career. It's that simple. Stephen A. Smith, thanks for not saving all the good stuff for Monday. Thanks for joining us. Always good to work with you. My man, same here. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN.